I love golf video games. But that love didn't grow easily at first. My first one was golf on the NES, and suffice to say, I was not impressed. My actual interest in these games sprouted thanks to a now defunct mini golf course close to my childhood home. The course was colorful, with unique designs for each hole. One of them had to play through the bones of what my infant brain assumed was a dinosaur. I learned then that golf, or at least certain kinds of golf, could be fun. After discovering how much I loved mini golf, I went to look for a similar experience in video games. And the game that was able to initially hook me in was Mario Golf. Mario Golf showed me that golf games don't have to strictly be just about golf. It can include unique challenges, scenarios, and courses that are more than just a vast green landscape. And from there on, I have eagerly anticipated every Mario Golf release and eventually started trying more unique games in the indie game community. Today I'd like to be your caddy on the course that is golf games. I'll show you the good ones and also some that fly out of the realm of ordinary golf. If you are someone who doesn't like the sport, then maybe these golf games could sway your opinion otherwise. I know this is my first video and all, but honestly, this is an excuse for me to just gush about my favorite golf games. When I say golf video game, most people's first thought is probably a one-to-one -one recreation of the sport. But there are actually different kinds of games in this genre that deconstruct the sport and try something new. I have found that golf games fall into a combination of the following categories. Golf simulation, which recreates the sport to a T. Arcade golf games employ a substantial change in the traditional aesthetics of the sport or a twist in the official golf rules. But the core is still golf. You have a limited number of tries to hit that ball into the hole, and your shots are handled via some kind of power and control gauge. The last one is something I'm calling alternative golf games. These games use the sport as a framing device to create unique gameplay scenarios that can involve a change in the game genre, a focus on a narrative experience, or sometimes not even playing the sport itself. These subsets lead to games that are almost never one and the same, and more often than not, titles that are very pleasant surprises. Let's start off nice and easy with golf simulation games and understand why golf games can be appealing in the first place. We are teeing off with the set of games you have probably heard of the most, and the series that turned my attention to golf games. The Mario Golf series has two very different design philosophies. The console titles are golf sims first and foremost, with a focus on arcade multiplayer in the form of unique modes, such as Ring Shot, where you try to play a golf under par while golfing through floating rings, Mini Golf lets you practice putting in bite-sized courses, and Club Slots randomly limits the clubs you're allowed to use. The best console iteration is definitely Mario Golf Toadstool Tour on the GameCube. Toadstool Tour is jam-packed with ways to play across seven varied courses, from forests to beaches to jungles and Bowser's Castle. You got tournament mode, ring shot, speed golf, club slots, two-on-two -two double games, and coin shoot mode, where you hit the ball across coins to collect the most amount. Where Mario Golf resonated with me the most was with the Game Boy iterations. Mario Golf for the Game Boy Color and Mario Golf Advanced Tour. This is where the second Mario Golf design philosophy comes into play. It's harder to play multiplayer on the Game Boy due to the cost barrier of needing two Game Boys, two copies of the game, and a Link cable. So these games focus instead on a single-player approach in the form of role-playing games. Camelot has a history of making JRPGs for Sega consoles, so it's really interesting to see them make a role-playing game out of… golf. And it worked extremely well. You create a character that you level up by taking part in tournaments, winning match games against different clubhouse champions, and clearing training lessons that not only level you up, but also organically teach you the mechanics of the game and how to nail your best shots. This is where my interest for the sport came in, as the Game Boy games really encouraged you to learn not only how to play Mario Golf, but also how to play golf. Most of the characters you meet don't relate to Mario and the denizens of the Mushroom Kingdom. They're all just regular folks who really like to play golf. Mario and friends are instead legendary golfers that you don't get a chance to play against until the very end of the game, giving these popular characters a unique role within the story mode. 
Mario Golf Advance Tour and Toadstool Tour on the GameCube introduced mechanics to add backspin and topspin to your ball's roll, which allows for further control that can be paramount to nailing that eagle or hole-in-one. I can't begin to tell you how many batteries I ran through with the Game Boy games, and the countless nights I stayed up giving the golf challenges just one more try. Mario Golf GBC and Mario Golf Advance Tour are easily the best no-fuss golf games, and a perfect place to start with golf sims. As I mentioned before, golf on the NES was the first golf game I ever played, and it was very much a game of its time. But a foundation was there, warts and all, and all of this was later improved by what I consider to be the first good iteration of a golf sim ever created, with NES Open Golf Tournament. All your Mario Pals that have become Nintendo staples by this point in the company's history are here. Alas, you can only play as Mario and Luigi. The Green Goober is only available to Player 2. Open Tournament plays virtually the same as NES Golf, but with added controls and information for the player. You now know how hard a specific club shot can hit, how far away you are from the pin, and you can curve the ball's flight path, or carry, for the golf nerds watching this. And really, that's all the information you need to enjoy the game. The main mode is a tournament mode which allows you to compete for the champion title and win cash prizes. What can you do with the money? Well, not much, really. You can deposit it for safekeeping or bet the money on holes to try to get more cash, but this is really just a score for your golf performance. Even playing it today, NES Open Golf Tournament can be a lot of fun. Just try to meet it halfway and understand it is definitely a dated game. From this point, golf sims started moving to 16-bit consoles and most notably to the arcade scene. And a prime example is the underrated Neo Turf Masters. The game was developed by Nazca Corporation for SNK, who would go on to develop and create the Metal Slug series. SNK's arcade games always had a very unique vibe to them, and Neo Turf Masters was no exception. You can hear some of the most 90s new wave music you can imagine, which absolutely owns, by the way. An announcer is constantly making all kinds of callouts, and gorgeous pixel art gives life to courses in Germany, Japan, Australia, and the US. One of my main gripes with golf as a sport is that a lot of the courses are all too similar. Lush green courses surrounded by pines and other common trees. Sometimes you'll have a course by the seaside with palm trees, but other than that, it's very samey. In contrast, Neo Turf Masters Arizona course has you tee off at the Grand Canyon with a rocky biome in the background, and oftentimes you have to hit a ball across the canyon itself. Australia's course has you play across open lagoons and fly over archipelagos. And if you're a video game in the 90s and Mount Fuji is not seen anywhere in the background, are you really in Japan? The game also moves fast. All your shots, no matter the distance they travel, take no more than 4 seconds to play out, leading to holes that you can play in well under a minute. If you want to play a retro golf sim with a great aesthetic, and the fact that you can easily grab this one on a Nintendo Switch without the need of an arcade machine, Neo Turf Masters is an easy recommendation. Everybody's Golf, or until recently Hot Shots Golf if you live in America, is Sony's flagship golf series, and it made its debut on the PS1 in 1997. But the best game in the series is also the latest one, and Everybody's Golf for PS4. It truly embodies the title of the series. It really is everybody's golf, thanks to a notably robust character creator and a big multiplayer focus. Courses act like huge online instances, populated by other players walking around, teeing off, driving golf carts, and even fishing. You can play standard stroke and match games against others, be it real-time players or their ghost data, and a very unique turf war mode, which splits the lobby into two teams as they claim holes for their side. As you have to physically travel to get to each hole, planning an optimal route is paramount, which adds more strategy and communication with the rest of your team. The world design also deserves a shout out, with the first course taking place in Eagle City, an amalgamation of California, Nevada, and New York. I didn't get a chance to play the other courses as this is where my one gripe with the game comes in. In order to unlock new areas, you have to rank up by grinding in the single-player portion of the game, and after playing the same 9 holes for 3 hours, I was only able to unlock the second half of Eagle City. Thankfully, matches move quickly, but be ready to play the same course for a good while before unlocking the next one. Fun fact, all games in the Everybody Golf series were developed by Clap Hands Golf, 
All of them except for the very first one, which was developed by Camelot Software Planning, known for the Golden Sun series on Nintendo's handheld consoles, and also the creator and current developers of the Mario Golf series. So at this point it's been uh, about three months since I called the script done and ready, but life happened and this video has been stuck in post-production for a while. And when that happens, buck wild things can throw a wrench in your plans, such as Sony announcing the servers for everybody's golf will be officially shut down in September. I still think this game is a lot of fun to play on your own or locally with someone, but it's a real shame we're losing a key feature that made this game so special. If you get a chance, definitely try to play the game online before everybody's golf becomes nobody's golf, am I right? Haha! <laughs> uh, I am actually really sad about this. So you tried golf sims and found out they are just not your thing. Maybe you gravitate more towards the party aspect of the Mario games with the unique side modes and mini games. That is when developers lean more into the arcade side of things with takes that don't really use official golf rules and focus more on the fun of playing a video game with friends. And that is what the next set of games is all about. We are starting this subset of games with Ribbit King on PlayStation 2 and the GameCube. The main hook of this game is that you don't play golf but instead Froth, where you catapult the frog across a course filled with spiders, snakes, and other creatures. Unlike traditional golf, where you play to finish with the least amount of strokes, you instead compete to have the most points, and you gain extra by hitting point bubbles, eating flies, or bouncing your frog off spider webs. Sinking the frog before your opponent does give you extra bonus points, so you have to consider a route that also allows you to finish the level efficiently. I like how bodies of water in this game aren't really hazards since your frog is able to swim across water. And the game even encourages you to do so by awarding you extra points. The courses are also diverse. There's a lush green world, a volcanic planet, and tech-savvy lands. And this is all within the context of a story mode involving a carpenter wanting to become Froth Champion because he would then win a fuel called Super Ribbonite that his planet needs, so he travels from world to world to play Froth with other beings? It is undeniably a unique representation of the sport, and I can definitely say it's an absolute blast. Seeing my frog get into all kinds of unique situations that snowball into accidental big plays is super satisfying. The very concept of failing upwards. Ribbit King is actually the successor of Kero Kero King, a Japan-only PS1 title. Kero Kero uses a traditional three-press system seen in most golf games, but other than that, it's pretty much the same game, though there's nothing wrong with that. But if you like that PS1 low-polygon pixel-dittered aesthetic, Kero Kero King is a lot of fun. Golf with your friends is an easy to pick up mini golf online game. Miniature golf, I feel, is the purest expression of what makes golf fun, all in a more compact, easily digestible form. Mini golf also allows for the most out there course design you can imagine. Not only is this seen in fun level themes like pirate coves, desert dunes, and candy lands, but also in the ways you have to hit your ball. Ricochet your ball across twists and turns, Sonic the Hedgehog your way through a loop, build enough momentum to climb up a giant steep, Shoot your ball out of a dang cannon. Again, the game is also way more fun with other players. When playing with others, everybody starts and plays at the same time and via an optional toggle, players can also collide with one another for an extra measure of chaos. And as a game with mod support, you can also find dozens of community-made courses. This game was a mainstay for some LAN parties I have gone to. You know, in, in the before times. Golf with your friends is for sure a game best enjoyed with friends after a long day of work over a very chill Discord call with maybe a stiff drink to add. If you are into the Nintendo Switch's indie scene, this is probably one you're familiar with. Golf Story. This one is heavily inspired by Mario Golf on the Game Boy, a top-down role-playing game that has you traverse a condensed overworld map with unique events, quirky characters, and of course, clubhouses hosting tournaments. The golf itself is pretty standard, but also extremely polished and fun to play. What makes the game unique is the story and activities that you do. Sometimes you have to shoot a ball to birds so they can carry it for you. Another course is a haunted graveyard where you shoot golf balls into the skulls of skeletons. Sometimes you work with an archaeologist to dig for ancient golf clubs as old as 50 years? And in order to dig for them, you have to whack the life out of the sand with your current clubs. Another event has you solve a murder mystery? It's pretty out there. 
Golf Story's characters do teach you how to play golf, but they also have unique personalities and funny scenarios. I want to emphasize funny because this game is hilarious, not only with character writing, but also with the previously mentioned wild scenarios that play out. Do not skip on Golf Story. It is one of my favorite Switch games. And whenever the sequel, Sports Story, comes out, I will definitely be talking about that. Another great indie is Wonder Wickets. A mini-golf-inspired game, Wonder Wickets has an art style reminiscent of 16-bit puzzle games like Panel de Pawn and the Puyo Puyo series. You hit a star orb through a top-down view course in order to collect dwarf stars before you can actually open the hole that will allow you to clear the level. Launching hot or cold star orbs lets you change the speed and friction of your shots, easily speeding your orb over bunker tiles or destroying different types of blocks and enemies. Eventually, you can collect power-ups that will transform your star orb, like a buzza orb that plows through enemies and cuts down wooden obstacles. I like how the star orb feels less like a traditional golf ball and more like a hockey puck, curving your shots, gliding over water, and ricocheting off walls and blocks. Some tiles slow you down, others speed you up, others have you flying off the field because you overpowered your shot for the third time. Like golf with your friends, Wonder Wickets also supports a full level editor, adding tons of fan-made levels. I'm surprised that Wonder Wickets is only available through Steam because this will be a surefire hit on a Nintendo Switch due to its quick burst nature. Nevertheless, a solid shout out to this game. If you were looking at how Wonder Wickets plays, you probably thought, well this looks a lot like a certain Super Nintendo game. And you'd be right, as this was heavily inspired by our next title, Kirby's Dream Course on the Super Nintendo. Hot Diggity Dan. This game goes hard. Growing up, this one was a regular blockbuster rental for me, despite the fact that I was just straight up bad at it. I remember only ever getting through the first set of levels and never being able to progress past that. My baby six-year-old brain could not comprehend curved shots, lob shots, or the fact that you must hit enemies to be able to have enough strokes to finish the hole to progress to the game. But now that I return to the game with my 31-year-old, no-thoughts, head-empty brain, I am now half-decent at the game, and it is straight up the best. Being based on a Kirby game means access to copy abilities like Parasol, Chili, Spark, Stone, Wheel, and many more. There are obstacles and tiles that will change your trajectory, switches that drain or freeze pools of water, or air vents that will lift Kirby. And all of the copy abilities synergize with these obstacles to help you better nail your shots and play faster holes. Again, this game slaps so hard. And now that it's on the Nintendo Switch online service, the game fully supports online play. Imagine my surprise when I started getting involved with YouTube and realized other people exist that would absolutely ride or die for this game. And now I can play with them even if they live across the country. Kirby's Dream Course is easily one of the best arcade mini golf experiences, and really one of the best Kirby games ever made. That last statement is not even an exaggeration. I just love this game that much. Guess what? Since this video has been in post-production purgatory for months, there was another big development in the golf game scene. Yes, that's a thing. I already knew about Curse to Golf for a bit, and while I initially forgot to mention it in this video, I chalked it off as it's not playable yet, so it's fine. But then, a limited time demo was Shadow Dropped. Roguelites are my jam, especially when they are on the Nintendo Switch. Doing a quick run while you're commuting or traveling, they are perfectly built for the Switch's portable mode. So when I heard Curse to Golf was a golf-like roguelite, oh you know I was in. And the demo is immensely fun. Some absolutely delightful pixel art ironically gives a lot of life to the game's setting, the golf purgatory. You are a professional golfer whose life tragically ended early, and now must golf your way out of purgatory for a chance to return to the land of the living. This involves following randomly ordered golf holes, this is what the press release says, that play less like golf courses and more like 2D dungeons. You avoid traditional golf hazards and play around more non-conventional objects like TNT boxes, fans that blow your ball, and teleporters that can aid your game or hinder your progress. Ace cards also give you access to multiple abilities such as being able to change your ball's trajectory mid-flight, turn your ball into lead so that it doesn't bounce, and one that stops time to immediately drop your ball where it is and <gasps> is that a JoJo reference? Needless to say, this one was a lot of fun and I cannot wait till it releases this summer. I'd say go check out the demo on Steam, but last time I checked, the demo was supposed to end on April 1st. But I captured the footage of the demo on April 3rd, so if it's not available then, I'm really sorry. So, sims are still not your thing. And as unique as arcade golf games can be, they still play like golf. 
Maybe you enjoy the aesthetics of the sport, but not the act of playing it. That is when alt golf games come into play. How about a golf game where you don't play golf, but instead build and maintain golf courses for others to play? Sim building games were big in the 90s and early 2000s with SimCity and Roller Coaster Tycoon. But one of the less talked about ones was Sid Meier's Sim Golf. A standard new game has to start from a real world location. You begin with a single character in a clubhouse building and from there you place a tee ground, a pin with a green, and your first hole is made. While building courses is simple, the game also rewards you for building pleasingly aesthetic courses. Patrons will become members of your golf club and will expect you to build parks full of flora and decorations. Building easy courses won't be enough as you want to build holes that look hard but are very much doable. Adding more amenities like a putting green or a snack bar will encourage members to bring new guests. And if you really spruce up your grounds, some guests might show up on an air balloon, which means you really did make a club exclusively for the elite. Neat. As you build courses, you eventually are allowed to play your very own creations, and while the mechanics boil down to clicking where you want the ball to land and letting RNGs take the wheel, it's a nice way to pass the time while you wait for more money from your patrons. Playing in sandbox mode lets you build the golf club of your dreams, while a standard game has a loose state if the board of directors doesn't see you making profits. Because capitalism! Golftopia is a spiritual successor to SimGolf and sports a more future wave aesthetic with lots of neon lights, robots that maintain your park, and sleek buildings. Golftopia lets you use sliders to custom generate an island that will allow you to build the neo-filled golf course of your dreams. Since the game building is not restricted to tile placement like SimGolf, you can organically build a course via terrain builder tools. You can paint fairways, sand traps, greens, and use layer toggles so you don't paint over certain areas, terraform your island to add more inclines, and make golf courses more interesting. And just like Wander Wickets and Golf with Your Friends, you can also experience islands made by other players via the Steam Workshop. I played the game only for a couple of hours, but I can easily see myself sinking dozens of hours into this sim building game. Golf Club Wasteland has you play courses on an uninhabitable Earth that has been destroyed by rampant capitalism. The planet has been left to die as the ultra-rich decided to check out and form colonies in… Tesla City on Mars. Huh. Little bit on the nose, but I guess we live in times where the subtext has to be plain text to drive the point home. Earth now serves as a golf course for the elite, so you'll be teeing off inside abandoned museums, across construction sites, and over toxic chemical pools. While it doesn't focus on keeping scores, it encourages you to clear the hole under par so you can unlock more diary entries of people that were abandoned in this desolate Earth, as well as other narrative incentives. And if scores are not something you want to worry about, a separate story mode focuses on the narrative being delivered via radio station conversations and unique music. I won't go into details to leave surprises for you, but this is a great game that you can clear in a chill weekend afternoon. Golf Peaks has you use carts to shoot balls across a tile-based hole into the cup. The different carts allow you to fly over water tiles, bounce off higher elevation tiles, and roll off inclines to clear the hole efficiently. Golf Peaks is arguably the quickest one to complete out of all the games in this video, but do not let its short length deter you. It does everything it sets out to do in its allotted time, and it does it with complete finesse. It's a short and sweet puzzle game that does not overstay its welcome, and makes it perfect for a quick pickup and play. A game that describes itself as a golf game for people that hate golf. What the Golf starts as a simple golf game for one hole, and immediately devolves into absolute chaos. Hit office chairs into a hole, shoot your ball with a bow and arrow, use a grappling hook to navigate chasms, keep enemies away from the green by using your power shot meter, shoot yourself into the hole. The possibilities are really endless. Every hole has a unique gimmick, so again, I won't go into details to leave surprises there. What the Golf recently also received a free update with an entire new campaign, so this one will keep you quite busy with really fun shenanigans. The last game on this video was honestly one I debated on whether or not to cover, but after some strong recommendations from friends, why yes, I do know other people who are as weirdly obsessed with golf games as I am, I decided to spend no more than an hour on it and holy crap did I quickly lose track of time. A Little Golf Journey was an extremely pleasant surprise of an adventure game. You make your way to an exclusive golf club by navigating a course selection screen reminiscent of Super Mario World and play holes that grade you with a 3-4 star ranking. 
Biomes range from lush forests to Japanese-inspired shrines, desert highways, and abandoned castles high in the mountains. At the beginning of the game, you get a letter talking about secret holes, asking you not to look for them since they're a nuisance. So obviously I went looking for them. Other than completing the hole as efficiently as possible, you also keep a lookout for strange things happening around the courses. An out-of-place transparent artifact, blue doors out of the main path, cacti doing a funky little dance. These will unlock different paths on the overworld that will lead to secret holes and spawning blue things around the world, as the game calls them. Collecting blue things eventually unlocks secret challenging courses, and wow, these are easily the highlight of the game. The aim is to just sink the ball into the cup, but they have you make really challenging shots over treacherous paths. At one point, one of them had me do what I can only describe as a Super Mario 64 wall jump. It was kind of mind-blowing. Again, I was initially only gonna play for about an hour, but ended up playing almost half of the game. And you know I'm going back for more. A really great golf game from Okidoki Ko and Platonic Friends. Definitely do not pass up on this one. So that was a whole lot of golf games. It was nice revisiting some old favorites and checking out exciting new ones. And I'm really surprised by just the sheer amount of diversity featured in this collection. It made me realize that there really is a golf game for just about anyone. And I didn't even cover other tangential games like Super Monkey Ball, the Nintendo DS exclusive True Swing Golf, or the fantasy role-playing RP Golf. That last one having a sequel releasing this year called RP Golf Legends. No matter the type of player you are, there is bound to be a golf game just for you. If you managed to make it to the end of this video, then I hope you can now understand how someone can spend an exuberant amount of time just talking about golf video games. Golf may not benefit from the hype or spectacle that easily comes to other mainstream sports, but when it comes to video games, even the most boring sport can sprout some absolute bangers. And I hope I've piqued your interest enough to give some of them a shot.